Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am so glad you decided to log on and be with us, and I just want to say welcome. You know, last week we took a little break from the teaching, and we had a great time of worship and prayer, and thank you for all of you that have joined us for that. But we are back tonight for Wednesday in the Word. Cheesy, cheesy, I guess, but it is Wednesday, and we are going to get into the Word together. So I'm so excited that you've joined me. You know, one word from God can change a life forever, so why don't you just go ahead and take a moment to share this video, uh, share this live feed tonight. You never know who may stumble across it. You, you, you never know who may uh, hear a word that will change their life and encourage them and build them up because that's what it's all about. So I want to thank you for taking the moment to do that and being an evangelist with me tonight so that we can reach as many people as possible with the word of the Lord. Hey, I'm really excited. We took a break, like I said last week. We're back in the word this week, and uh, I've really been praying about what we're going to be talking about over the next several weeks. Uh, you know, we had been talking for many weeks about how we do not limit God in our life. And as we took a break to pray and to worship together last week, I felt the Lord's been dealing with my heart. Uh, about talking about prayer. So uh, prayer is something that's very important to me personally, and I know it's important to you. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about prayer. And uh, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, you know, if you were here with us Sunday, uh, we broke down Second Chronicles 714. And in the day and the time that we're living in today, and all the chaos and all the uncertainty and the things that are happening in the world, it's time for the church to be a praying church. Come on, I wish I had everybody in here giving me an amen right now. But it's time that we be the praying church. Your prayers are important. And so tonight we're going we're gonna to go to uh, Luke chapter 11. So won't you go ahead and get your Bible right there where you are and go with me to Luke chapter 11. But before we uh, get there tonight, we're going to take a moment to open with prayer. But I just want to say uh, thank you. For those of you that are able to come on Sunday morning, we are open back up. And if you want to come and be with us on Sunday mornings at 1030, we also have a prayer time at 930 here in the sanctuary. And I just wanted to invite you to come and be with us. For those of you that are still not ready to get out, uh, we're going to continue, as you already know, to stream online on Sunday mornings. I also want to say this before we pray. Thank you for your faithfulness and your giving uh, through this whole pandemic and having to social distance and quarantine and, uh, you know, shelter in place and all those type of things. You have been faithful to give. We've been able to continually sow into, commu into our community and ministries that we've partnered with in our community to help support financially. Uh, we are very excited that we continue to get to do that. Uh, and it's because of your faithfulness and your giving. And so I want to give you an opportunity tonight that if you want to sow into the ministry, uh, you can click on myrevivechurch.com slash give, and you are able to give there. And so thank you so much for your donation. Thank you so much for your faithfulness with your tithes and your offerings. Uh, God always gives seed to the sower, and it's so good to be in covenant with him financially and I'm so grateful for his promises. So let's go to the Lord in prayer as we get ready to go to Luke chapter 11 tonight. Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to open up your word, to gather around your scripture tonight. We are so thankful for technology and what you've given us to be able to broadcast the gospel, your word. And so, Lord, as we come to do that tonight, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would flood every home and every listener and every person, God, that hears this sermon, hears this message tonight that you would just encourage them and strengthen them. Father, every giver, that you would just continue to bless, even those that may not be able to give financially. Lord, just bless your people, pour out your spirit upon them, and lead them forward in all that you have for them. And Lord, we thank you that we cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from your mouth. So Lord, speak to us tonight. Encourage us and help us to go deeper into the place of prayer and intimacy. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Luke chapter number 11, I want to start out with uh, Luke chapter 11 verse 1 tonight. The Bible says this, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, this is talking about Jesus, that as he was playing in a, praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he answered them, and here's what he said, 
Uh, this is very familiar scripture tonight, but I want you to tune in to what he says. He says, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but to deliver us from the evil one. As I've already stated, we're going to take the next several weeks and we're going to talk about prayer. It was a while back that I did a series called Kingdom Prayers. Some of you might have been here on our Wednesday night teaching when we talked about Kingdom Prayers. And prayer is something that's so important in the life of a believer. Prayer is essential in the life of a believer. Prayer is something that we even, for those of you that have been a part of Revive Church, know that prayer is a pillar that God spoke to us when we started this church seven years ago, that we, would, we are to be a people of prayer, that we are to be a house of prayer, that we're to be a church of prayer. So prayer is something that's very important that I like to teach on. And it's one of my favorite things to teach on. And I try to teach on prayer at least once a year because how many know we all need some refresher? We all need to get our focus back where it needs to be. And we all need to grow in our prayer life. Listen, I've been saved for a long time, but I'm, I still want to grow in my prayer life. So I'm going to share some things with us tonight that maybe you've heard before. But the purpose of this is to begin to stir a spirit of prayer in our life. It is so important. And I remember when I first got saved uh, many years ago, when I first got saved, I knew that after I gave my heart to Jesus that it wasn't just about me walking down an aisle and saying that I gave my heart to Jesus and being water baptized. I knew that there was this longing in my heart that once I got saved, there was something more than just attending church. That being saved means that I can have a relationship with Jesus, that he becomes my personal savior. But in the midst of that, to grow in a relationship with someone, how many know there must be communication? And prayer is simply that, is communication. And prayer is so important. It is so in, uh, essential in our life. And I remember after getting born again, getting saved, and going home that night feel, feeling different, it was a Sunday morning, uh, a long time ago that I got saved in a, in a church. I answered an altar call. That was my experience. I, answered, I heard the gospel. I answered an altar call. And I remember going home that night, and I said, Lord, teach me to pray. Many of you might have heard me tell this story before. I said, Lord, teach me to pray. And then I did something that I didn't think was very spiritual. I fell asleep. I asked the Lord to teach me to pray, and then I fell asleep. Sometimes you just need to take a nap. <laughs> Come on. How many know that sometimes you're striving and trying to make things happen and make things work, and sometimes you just need to rest in the Lord? But anyway, my story goes like this, that I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, teach me to pray, and I fell asleep. And I'll never forget this. The next morning I woke up, and I just sensed the presence of the Lord, and I just began to talk to God. I just began to talk to him, and so prayer is a passion of mine because, uh, you know, it's not a formula, it's not a religious ritual, it's actually communicating with our Heavenly Father. It's communicating with the Lord Jesus, and so prayer is one of the most essential parts of a believer's life. Prayer is to be a part of our life on a daily basis. A lot of times people only pray when they get into trouble or they need something. And prayer goes so much more deeper than that. It is so much more deeper. And in Luke chapter 11, the disciples were asking Jesus to teach them how to pray. And the first thing he says, he says, when you pray, pray like this, our Father. And we've heard many teachings about this, but the opening part of Jesus' prayer, the model prayer, the Lord's prayer that he gives us, is the first thing that stands out to me is that we are to relate to him as a father. That there is to be intimacy in prayer, and prayer should be a part of our daily lives. It is so important that it shouldn't just be on a Sunday or a Wednesday or when I'm tr in trouble or when things aren't going good or maybe when I feel good, then I can praise God. No, it is to be a daily part of our lives. 1 Thessalonians actually tells us this in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, that we are to pray without ceasing. You know what that simply means is this, is that we should always be 
in an attitude of prayer. We should always be aware that our Father is with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And prayer is not just simply tucking ourselves away somewhere. Listen, we'll talk about that later. I believe the secret place is so important that we do tuck ourselves away somewhere. But you can call upon Him in the street. You can call upon Him at the library. If people still go there, you can call upon him in Walmart. Somebody said amen right there. You can call upon him wherever you are. And when the scripture says that we're to pray without ceasing, it is this, it is this uh, connection that we're to have with our Father who is in heaven that we are to be constantly in communication with him. Not just when the pastor calls a prayer meeting, not just Sunday, not just Wednesday. Listen, this is very elementary, but I'm stirring us up tonight so that we understand that God is calling us to take our prayer to another level. That He wants to talk to us, and He wants us to be talking to Him. So what is prayer? Prayer is this. Prayer is two-sided. Listen, i got a coin in my pocket tonight, and this coin has two sides. This is a dime. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's a dime. It has a heads and a tails. We all know that. And a coin has two sides. And prayer has two sides like a coin. Prayer is not just a monologue. It's not just a one-way conversation. Prayer is a two-way conversation. It, actually, prayer is a dialogue. It is this. It is, I speak to God and God listens. I speak to God and God listens. You speak to God and God listens. See, prayer has been, been brought down in, in, in many cases that we're just always petitioning. And there is a prayer of petition. But, but to have a prayer life that is fruitful, to have a prayer life that gets results, it's got to go beyond just a petition. So tonight I'm trying to lay this foundation of prayer that Jesus laid for us here in Luke chapter 11. And what we've got to understand is prayer is not just me speaking to God and God listening to me and God giving him, me giving God a bunch of things that I need him to do. God, I need you to work on my wife. Come on. God, I need you to work on my children. God, I need you to work on my boss. God, I need you to do this. God, I need you to do that. For a lot of people, prayer has become that in their life. And then we wonder why we don't get results. We wonder why there's no prayer power in the church corporately and it's because we must understand that prayer is not just me speaking to God and God listening to everything I have to say but prayer is actually has another side to the coin it's him speaking to me and me listening listen as far as intercession and spiritual warfare in prayer it's one of my favorite types of prayer it is when we're warring, when we're interceding, there's just something about going to the place of intercession. But what I've had to learn and what I'm learning is that sometimes prayer is me sitting still and listening to God. It is me sitting still and saying, Holy Spirit, I welcome you here. Speak to me. God, speak to me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And see, when we begin to embrace the foundation of prayer, the intimacy of prayer, and we begin to build on our foundation, that is when our prayers begin to get results. See, kingdom prayers always get results. Because here's the reality. I've said this before. Everybody prays. Everybody prays. Listen, the person that is late for work, that is speeding, is praying, man, I hope that cop's not around the corner. Please, Lord, don't let that cop be around the corner. The person that steals is usually praying they don't get caught. Everybody prays. Some people pray to false gods. Yes, I said it. Some people pray to false gods. Some people have no relationship with God, and they try to pray to Him that they won't get caught doing something wrong. Everybody prays, but not everybody gets kingdom results because prayer is so much more than a religious routine and a ritual to try to get God to do something that we want Him to do in our life. Prayer at its core and its foundation is, is in prayer to get results begins with intimacy with the Father who is in heaven. 
So Jesus gives us this greatest model, the greatest model of prayer that has ever been recorded. And when he gives us this model, the thing that we must understand is that with anything, the most important thing is its foundation. It is the foundation. Foundation is so important. That's why foundational word, foundational scripture is so important. That's why it is dangerous when people say, oh, I've already heard that. Yeah, maybe you've already heard that, but are you doing that which you have heard? Don't let me step on your toes too hard, but are you already doing that which you have heard that comes from the Scripture? Because when we go back to the foundation of prayer, we realize that foundation is the most important thing in any type of building project. And I hope that you that are listening to me tonight realize that we are wanting to build our life on a firm foundation. We are wanting to build our family. We are wanting to build our communities. We are wanting to build our children on a firm foundation. And the foundation to this thing of prayer is simply this, intimacy. I cannot stress this enough that prayer is about intimacy and that's what Jesus was telling us in the greatest model of prayer in Luke chapter 11 verse t- uh, verse 2 he said our father in heaven hallowed be your name so we address him in a place of intimacy so I want to ask tonight how do we build a prayer life that really gets kingdom results How do we build a prayer life that really gets kingdom results? If you've taken notes tonight, you need to write this down because the first thing we have to do is connect with God relationally. I want to give you a moment. We must connect with God relationally. See, for a lot of people, there's a disconnect with God until they really need something. There is a disconnect with God. There's really no connection. We're connected to everything else. We're connected to the news media. We're connected to the uh, uh, Facebook. We're connected to social media platforms. We're connected to our friends. We're connected to society. We're connected to the culture. We're connected to the day and the time that we live in. And a lot of people are so connected with the things of the world, they think the things of God are irrelevant today. And I'm here to tell you that the greatest fulfillment in life is having a personal intimate relationship with Jesus and the only way to have a personal intimate relationship is to understand this communication and this prayer life and this prayer language that we are to connect with God relationally it's like with your children for those of you that have children you want a relationship with your children you don't want them just to talk to you when they need something And they don't have to call your name 500 times. Listen, I hope I don't offend somebody tonight, but you know what? We're living in a society today that just about everything offends somebody. But you don't have to approach God, Father God, Father God, and the Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God. You don't have to say his name over and over. But if that's what you want to do, that is okay. But God wants us to connect with him relationally. Not through a system, not through a bunch of rules, But we are to connect with him relationally. Listen to this in Romans chapter 8 verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by which we cry out Abba Father. We have been adopted into his kingdom. We have been adopted by him That even the scripture says, when your mother and your father forsake you, he will take you in. He has adopted us in, and God loves for us to relate to him as a father. He loves for us to relate to him relationally. Let me tell you, this this was a turning point in my prayer life when I began to connect with God relationally. It went from a religious duty of prayer to a relationship with a father that loves me that begin to create greater results in my life when I begin to pray. 
listen, y'all, it began to change everything about my walk with God. That it was no longer a religious rules that I had to do, but this was a relationship that I had with a loving Father that I didn't have to feel guilty. I didn't have to feel condemnation. That when I messed up, I could run to the Father and say, Father, I have messed up. I have sinned. I have fallen short. The way I talked to so-and-so and what I did and this, and I was able to relate to him. And whenever I was able to relate to him and stop and listen, he always washed me with his word. He always picked me up when I would fall. And he always strengthened me and made me better. I'm telling you that in this day and time that we're living in, we need a church that understands prayer and understands kingdom prayer. We need a church. I'm not talking about just a small organization. I'm talking about the church that we are relating and connecting to him relationally. Relationally. Prayer is about an intimate relationship, not a religious routine. Listen, I want to tell you tonight that if your prayer life is mundane and it is a religious routine and it's just a list, listen, prayer lists are great and good. Don't hear me wrong. But how is the relational aspect? Because when we get the relationship part right with him and we understand that prayer at its core and foundation and the foundation of it is to be intimacy with the Father, it is to be relational, it is to be connecting with him relational. Your prayer of petition is going to go to another level. I'm telling you, the prayer of intercession is going to go to another level. The binding and loosing prayer is going to go to another level. The prayer of agreement, we're going to talk about these prayers over the next few weeks, but the prayer of agreement will go to the next level. I'm here to tell you that one of the greatest prayers that we can pray is a prophetic prayer. It is an unction from heaven, and that unction only comes through intimacy and relationship. I believe with all of my heart, if you will hear the cry of the Father tonight, and you will begin to connect with us and begin to connect with this word, and you will begin to be a doer of this word, all of our prayer lives, including mine, is going to go to a new dimension and a new level. I'm here to tell you that I believe that you're going to begin to see results in prayer that you've never seen before because the foundation of our prayer life is right. It is built upon intimacy with the Father because prayer is about an intimate relationship not a religious routine listen to this intimacy is this is close familiarity it is friendship or closeness listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 4 31 through 34 it says in the meantime his disciples urged him saying rabbi eat but he said to them I have food to eat from which you do not know Therefore, the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. See, if anybody was intimate with the father, it was Jesus. There are scriptures that say that Jesus only did what he saw his father do and he only spoke what he heard his father say. Jesus was a model of intimacy, intimacy and relationship with his father. And when the disciples were trying to get him to eat, he said, he said, you know, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So you know what this tells me? That kingdom prayers, that prayers of intimacy, that prayers that get results are more spiritual than they are natural. It's easy to just pray in the natural. But the disciples in this passage of scripture in John chapter 4, they were focused on the natural nourishment. And Jesus didn't necessarily correct them, but they were trying to get Jesus to eat. Why? Because they were focused on the natural nourishment. But Jesus began to shift their focus and say, listen, my food is this, to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Jesus was more focused on the spiritual nourishment. Because when you do the will of the Father, you are nourished spiritually. 
A lot of people get burnt out. Listen, I've been in a place in my life many years ago that I got burnt out. I wasn't receiving spiritual nourishment. Why? Because I was more focused on the natural than the spiritual. I was more focused on meeting other people's needs with my own natural gifts or abilities instead of going to the well and being filled up and then pouring back out. And in the place of prayer, it is important that we realize that kingdom prayers are more spiritual than they are natural. It's not just about the natural. What I mean by that is this, that the disciples were more focused on the natural, but Jesus was focused on the spiritual nourishment. And the Jesus secret to to prayer strength is this. It is surrendering to the Father's will. Listen, can I tell you the will of the Father? Let me just tell you from a pastor's perspective. The will of the Father is not for me to necessarily be successful in the world's eyes. The will of the Father is not just for me to be successful in my own eyes. The will of the Father is for me to surrender to His will. Jesus taught us that. We'll talk about that later. Not my will, but your will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. See, Jesus had prayer strength. When Jesus spoke with authority, demons fleed. When Jesus cursed a fig tree, it shriveled up and died. Not because he just spoke the word, but because he had intimacy with the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit in his life. There's a lot of people binding and loosening stuff and ain't nothing happening. You know why? Because it's out of religious obligation and religious routine. It is a formula and not a place of intimacy with the Father. And Jesus had prayer strength because he surrendered to the Father's will. See, it is only surrender that brings intimacy. It is surrender that brings intimacy. That whenever we even come together corporately, it's not about my prayer life or my prayer language. It's about my surrender to him, surrendering And when we surrender, it brings intimacy. And when you're in that place of intimacy, the Father reveals things to you to pray out. And when you begin to pray those things out and you have have direction from heaven and you have unction from heaven through an intimate relationship with him because your prayer begins at the place of surrender and intimacy. This is kingdom prayer, not religious prayer. And it is surrender that brings power in prayer. Let me say that again. It is surrender that brings power in prayer. See, listen, natural prayer, praying out of our own strength and our own will. Well, I got to get up and go to prayer again because, you know, I'm a Christian and Christians are supposed to pray. Listen, if that is our attitude, we need an, we need an encounter with the love of God. I can't stand up here tonight and tell you that I've always been all uh, at that place that I did just, just mentioned. There are times where you feel like you don't know what to pray, or you feel like prayer is a routine, or you, or you feel like it's mundane. I'm not saying that we never feel those things, but I'm just saying that if prayer is just a natural thing we do because we were taught we are supposed to pray, but there's no intimacy there, your prayer life And your prayers will never reach past the ceiling. And many of us have felt that before, like my prayers are bouncing off of the ceiling. And I've felt that before in my life too. But what we've got to understand, we've got to go back to the foundation. What is this prayer really all about? So that I can get something that I need God to do? Or is it so that I can surrender to His will and so that I can surrender and just be with Him? Because in His presence is fullness of joy in his presence is strength in his presence is everything that we need and that's what prayer is all about being in the presence of God see natural prayer just going through the motions and the religious routine cannot sustain you listen because a lot of us are in trials some of us are in fights uh, in a spiritual fight. Some of us are, are facing opposition in a test. And let me say this. Natural prayer can't sustain you in the trial. 
It cannot sustain you in the fight. It cannot sustain you in the test or the opposition. It is intimacy that will get you through the test. It is receiving from the Father, being in His presence. I can't tell you, some of you probably going, that have been hearing me probably going to get tired of me referring back to this, but when my mother was uh, in February, when she was in the ICU and had a ventilator and she wasn't given even hardly a chance to live, and, 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 I, and I kept binding and loosing, I kept speaking, I kept praying in authority, and there was nothing wrong with that. But there came a point that I had to just surrender to the will of the Father, and I knew the will of the Father was long life. I knew the will of the Father is healing and breakthrough and restoration. I knew that was the will of the Father. But listen, there came a, there came a time in that battle that I, I felt weary. I felt tired. And it was, it, it was a place that I stepped into that I was just using my own natural ability and trying to will the will of God. And it was when I came to this place of surrender... And I began to get back into a place of prayer that was not just natural in me going through the three laws of binding and loosing or the key steps to the prayer of binding and loosing or the, 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 the key steps to getting your prayers answered. All that formula and all that biblical stuff is really good, but the foundation, y'all, hear me tonight, is intimacy. Intimacy. It is that relationship, and when I was in that battle, when I was in that test, when I was in that trial, when I was facing that opposition, just the natural prayer could not sustain me. It was getting back to the place of intimacy. See, it is a surrendered life to the will of God, an intimate prayer that will sustain you in every fight, in every trial, in every test, in every temptation. I love what it says in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28. It says, for in him we live and move and have our being. Listen, you guys, a lot of people can pray. A lot of people can pray without being in a place of intimacy. Listen, the Pharisees did it. The Sadducees, the religious people did it. They prayed long prayers that were looked super spiritual, but they were nothing but religious rituals, religious prayers, and religious routines. I'm here to tell you that when Jesus came to establish what he established here on the earth, when he came to die for us, when he came to give us the model prayer, it is time for the church in 2020 to realize that our foundation of prayer to get results is intimacy with the Father. It is not my natural routine and how good I sound and how long I can pray. No, it's not about that. It's about connecting with him in this place of prayer that our focus Focus in prayer should be intimacy with the Father. Because access for it's in Him that we live and we move and we have our being. See, the position of power in prayer is in Him. It is in Him. It is found in Him. Kingdom prayers are birthed from a place of intimacy with the Father. To get prayer results, they are birthed from this place of intimacy with the Father. With the Father. Kingdom prayer is inside his presence, not outside his presence. Listen to this in Luke chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. Luke chapter 5, verse 15 says, However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Listen, this is so important that we get this. If we're going to be a kingdom people, a kingdom church, if we're going to see results from our prayer, prayers, if we're going to take our prayer life to a new dimension and a new level, it is the foundation of intimacy. But even Jesus himself would withdraw. He, the, the scripture says he would withdraw into the wilderness and he would pray. You know why? Because there was so much distraction and there were so many things pulling upon him. There were so many things reaching for his attention. How much so for us today with our cell phones, 
with our media and social media and all the things that are going on and children and this and that, life just kind of overtakes us. And, 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 and Jesus would, 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 would withdraw into the wilderness. He would go to a place of prayer. And so what we must realize about prayer, it's not the re- religious routine and the ritual, but we got to realize prayer is more important than anything else. Jesus knew that prayer was so important. Listen, there were multitudes upon multitudes that needed Jesus, that were calling on Jesus, that needed Jesus to do this. And I mean, he was healing people, and he could have he could have stood there for his entire ministry and never slept and just continued to minister and minister and minister and minister to the needs. But even Jesus himself needed the intimacy with the Father. He knew that if his prayers and and, and declaring healing and, and, and touching people and seeing them healed, that he had to be in the presence of his Father, that intimacy was so important. And the Bible says that he would withdraw into the wilderness and he would pray. And so listen, you, you guys, we've got to realize that prayer is more important than service because service is only powerful when we've come from a place of prayer and intimacy with the Father. Do you know what that tells me? You should become a worshiper of God before you become a worker of God. Let that sink in just for a moment. There's a lot of people that can work for God, but they don't know how to worship God. And that's when they end up getting burnt out or offended or upset. Because they can can work for God, sign me up for this, sign me up for that, but they're not a worshiper. When people come to Revive Church, listen, we don't, we don't just try to throw them into the fire of a ministry all of a sudden or get them serving all of a sudden. That is so important. But you know what? Are you a worshiper of God? Are you in a place of intimacy with Him? Because God wants us to be in a place of intimacy before we're even in a place of work. I want to say it like this. is We actually should become a son or daughter of God. Before we become a servant of God, walking in sonship, walking as a daughter. You know how that comes? Through prayer and the foundation of that prayer being intimacy. See, God wants us to be a friend of God even before we become an ambassador for God. Why? Because we're all called to be ambassadors. We're all called to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We're all called to be a witness for God. But when you've come out of a place of intimacy and your heart is intimate with Him, there is greater presence and power on your life to hear and to speak what the Father is saying through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, tonight as we talk about this thing of prayer, we must understand, as I've said it over and over and over again, our foundation is intimacy. It is intimacy. And that is the key takeaway for us tonight is intimacy is the foundation to a kingdom prayer life. I'm talking about a kingdom prayer life that gets results. The foundation is intimacy. So let me give you a couple of steps before we close this thing out tonight. Step number one is this, is that we need to begin to ask the Lord. Hear me, we need to begin to ask the Lord to teach us to grow deeper in intimacy with Him. And then listen, I'm challenging us either tonight, tomorrow, the next day, sometime this week before we get to next week's teaching, that we find a place that we can withdraw from all the distractions and we say, Lord, teach us how to grow in intimacy, a deeper intimacy with you in this place of prayer. And then listen to what he says. That's an action step. The second action step is this. Learn more about growing in intimacy. How do I really grow in intimacy with God? Ask the Lord. How do I really grow intimacy with God? And the last thing is this. Make intimacy with Him your priority. You know, that's what I've had to learn as a pastor, that my priority is not trying to get another word for next week. My priority is intimacy with him. And in that place of intimacy, he gives me a word for the next week. 
Come on, a lot of times we've got it backwards, and so we must make intimacy with him a priority. So let us pray together tonight. I want to pray for us. Those of you that are maybe on tonight that you're not a part of this church, we're so thankful. We're so glad that you're listening tonight. We pray that God speaks to you and ministers to you. But those of you that are a part of this house, Revive Church, those of you that are a part of this family, listen, I'm challenging us to go deeper in intimacy in this place of prayer. I'm believing that over the next few weeks, we're going to begin to step into a greater depth of prayer than we ever have. I'm believing that for some of us that have been stale in the place of prayer, mundane in the place of prayer, there is a fresh stirring for prayer in our life. And so I want to challenge you with these action steps. I want to challenge us with these action steps, and I want us to take this journey together. So let me pray for you right where you are tonight. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you that it's not about religious routine or ritual. It's about intimacy with you. It's about living in you, moving in you, and having our being in you. We thank you that you want to be a part of every detail of our life, that you care about the smallest thing or the biggest thing and everything in between. Father, we come to you tonight because we want to grow in intimacy with you. We want to decrease that you would increase in our life. God, we don't want to just be religious prayer people. We don't want to just be people that our prayers bounce off the ceiling. But, Father, we want to be people that go deeper in prayer and intimacy with you. So, Father, tonight I'm asking that you would speak to us, that you would stir a spirit of prayer on the inside of us. God, that you would stir us up to pray, that, God, you would begin to speak to us, to come together corporately like never before, that, Father, that that we would come together at 930 on Sunday mornings corporately, but not only that, that the place of prayer and intimacy would be stirred in our personal life. That, God, the flame, individual flames would begin to burn on the inside of us. And then when we come together, the flame corporately would burn stronger and brighter and brighter. Father, I'm praying tonight that you would raise us up to be a people that get prayer results. That, Lord, as we stand in this time that we're facing and the things that we're facing in our personal lives, in our communities, and in this nation, that we would be the people of prayer that you've called us to. Lord, let our foundation of intimacy be a strong foundation that will not be shaken. So I bless your people tonight, and I thank you for moving us forward in this place of prayer and intimacy. Lord, I bless every listener and every person under the sound of my voice tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Sunday morning, 930, corporate prayer right here in the sanctuary. 1030, we begin our service. We'll see you soon. Have a good night.